The, big, the beats here fumble. Produced a Ray touchdown. 17-yarder from Kate Reinick. The drive took over a minute. 16-yard drive. After they lost a yard on the first play. 42-31 Ray with 7.56 to go in the game. And this is a high, deep kick. Shea Hansen at the backup at his five. Drops the ball, picks it up. He'll fake the head off the Rosenbrock. Run to his left, across the 15-yard line. Has a seam to the 20. Breaks the tackle to the 30-yard line. And then is tripped up at the 33. The return of 28 for Shea Hansen. And that's where the beat diggers will have possession of the football with 7.44 to go. They've got two timeouts remaining. And, I mean, safe to say here, you can't take four or five minutes to score, Dave. You've got to do it pretty quickly. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I really like that play, though. That was fun to see him come out with that um, reverse, uh, fake reverse on the on the kickoff return. And they fooled a lot of Ray Eagles. A lot of them followed Rosenbrock over to this side. And I would have, too, given the success he's had tonight. First and 10, they'll mark the football to 34. The Bay Diggers, for the third time tonight, are down by 11. The quarterback is Mitch Tormolin. Trips to the right. And on first down, Tormolin rolling to his right, setting up, wanting to throw off his back foot. Incomplete. Shea Hansen was well covered at the 43-yard line by Ben Jones and by Brett Blasin at second down and 10. Yeah, there was no way he was going to complete that pass. No, they had some pretty good coverage on that, but Tremont comes out his very first touch of the game and rolls out on that bootleg right. And I'll tell you what, it looked pretty good. They had some nice takes there and stepped up and threw the football. Garcia looks perfectly healthy on the sideline, so not sure why the switch was made, but that obviously is a coach's decision. Second down and 10 from the uh, 34-yard line. Trips to the right. Well, Mullen's going to hand it up to Weiser, running left to the 40-yard line, to the sideline, 45. First down to the 50, and Ray Territory knocked out of bounds at the 47, a gain of 19, and a beat digger first down. Boy, that was a nice run there. Tell you what, there's a Ray Eagle that took the brunt of the fury on that run. And the good thing is that the clock stops with 7.31 to go and brushed down by 11. Skyler Seawald now into the game for Connor Weiser. Well, why are they running clock now? He definitely was out of bounds, and now, yeah, you've got to put some time back on. But they, they instructed, the, for, for some reason, the official instructed for that clock to be run. And in, that's a precious seven seconds that came off the clock. First and ten for the Ray, 47-yard line. Tormolin, quick drop, throws it out the right side. Caught by Rosenbrock at the 46-yard line, tries to break a tackle, and he's still at his feet. And then he's dragged back by about five Eagles, and he's down after a game one. He's second down and nine. At the 46. And Rosenbrock took a beating there, but that's what happens when it's one against five. Yeah, and when you're trying to make something out of nothing, he wasn't going to go down. One-stop shop for all of your banking and investment needs from checking to savings to IRAs is Morgan Federal Bank, 321 Insign Street. Morgan Federal Bank, there's a difference. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Second down and nine for the 46. Looks like Ray's coming on a blitz. For Mullen, deep drop, sets up a screen. Over to the wider, the 45, and then he's tripped up to the 41 by Austin Willard. It's a gain of five on the play, but it could have been much bigger if Willard was not there to make the tackle. It's a nice screen, though. A little bit of a wobbly pass, but it was a nice call for a screen at that time because they're coming. They're bringing the works. It'll be third, long four. The clock is the enemy right now to brush. 6.13 to go in the game. Ray leads 42-31. to 31. The Bay Diggers rank number one in 2A by the Denver Post after knocking off Faith Christian, but that ranking is in jeopardy, even though the coaches will tell you, and I think most will tell you, the rankings really don't matter, especially at this time of year. Third and four, Tormolin. Back to throw, rolling right, pressure coming, he falls to the ground. He slips at the 49-yard line of Ray. The loss of eight. That goes as a sack. A lot of the beat diggers go for it here on fourth down and 12. If they have any chance of winning the game, they might have to go for it right now. Yeah, they're going to have to with five minutes left on the clock. They, you know, they're down by two, two 
scores. Weiser is out. Seawald is in. Fourth and 12 from the 49. And the clock is running. They're back up to the line of scrimmage. Hansen and Kukas are to the left. Albo and Rosenbrock to the right. And they're going to call a timeout. Randy Dreisch just did. The play clock was inside of five seconds. Brought to you by Edwards Wright Price Market in Flowerland. Well, Dave, unless the pay diggers come back here, they're going to learn a lot from this game. Yeah, they are, you know. And, and the thing is, is, you know, you look back at uh, Coach Terry Clough gave us uh, some paperwork on, on uh, the last time the diggers beat Ray and who beat who and when. And the last time the diggers won a state title was when they lost to Ray. So... You know, it's good to it's good to go up against tough competition, and it's good to it's good to lose. You know, I hate to say it. Sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. But if you if you it depends on how you recover from a game like this, and how you improve your performance and improve your work ethic for practice. It breeds a little bit of humility into your program, and uh, you know, it's good to play. It's just good to play against tough teams and, and lose once in a while. No question about that. The Bay Diggers last year were 0 and 4 and made it to the state semis, winning eight games in a row, including two games in the playoffs before losing to Faith Christian. And unless they come up with a big play now, they're going to lose this game to Ray, down 42-31 to with 5.05 to go. The big play of the game, undoubtedly, up by four with that third and 18 that went for 72 yards. No bigger play in this game. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Baxter split, fourth and 12 for the beat diggers at the Ray 49-yard line. Paul Bowen. Back to throw. Pressure coming up the middle. Rolls to his left. Pops. He picks up with a football to 45. He stops. He goes back into the 41-yard line. Then he's smothered under. Paul Mullen is tackled at the 41. It's not enough for a first down. A gain of eight. And the Eagles take over with 4.55 to go in the game. Then he went up. He came up with that pump, pump fake as he was running left, a right-handed quarterback. But, you know, he took off running like crazy. But the Eagles, just like they've done all game, just closed in on it quick because this defense is, is real fast. First and ten for the Bay Diggers at their own 42. Bay Diggers need to force a turnover. Ray's going to run the football more than likely. There's a quick hitter right up the gut to Austin Willard. Dives his way to the 44. Felix Calderon and Kyle Hefner on the tackle. Second down and eight. And you know that the Eagles will take time off the clock as we're inside of four and a half minutes to go in the game. Ray does a real good job, just like the diggers do, at taking time off the clock when they're ahead. You know, they look back there and watch that official and watch him start counting before they ever think about snapping the ball. Second down and eight. Lausanne with a deep handoff and running left and hitting the backfield. And that might be Beckman this time. It is. Check that. That's Kate Reinick. Kyle Hefner was in that backfield. A loss of one. So was Rosenbrock. Third and nine. Now does Ray stay aggressive here and pass the football? They've done that so many times on third down. Or do they just take time off the clock? The beat diggers only have one timeout remaining with 3.49 to go in the game. I think it... You know, it'd be interesting to see what they do, but it'd be risky for them to throw it out wide, risk a quick touchdown, uh, interception return for a touchdown. From the 43, and there's a penalty. That'll be delay of game against the Eagles. That'll make a third and 14. At the 38-yard line. Boy, this Ray offense is going to be tough to stop all year, Dave. But they're good. They have a lot of weapons, don't they? And just the ability for them to throw the football so fast to some good, big receivers. And not to mention the great play of that offensive line. They've controlled the line of scrimmage virtually the whole game. Third and 14. Blossin, quick drop. He lobs it up the left side. Pure is out there. It's incomplete. Well defended by Tanner Morrow at the 40. Oh, come on. There's a Ray fan calling for interference. If that's interference, I'm Abe Lincoln. Come on. <laughs> no interference. That's just a well-defended play. Well, if there's any interference, it would have been on Cure as he was behind Marl. Marl was ahead of him towards the ball, and Cure was kind of going over his back to get there. 
Ray will have to punt with 3.29 to go. The Bay Diggers are looking for a miracle. Well, if Rosenbrock can return one, I mean, that's not a miracle. He's been great tonight. Jared Kier standing inside his 25-yard line. The Bay Diggers look like they're coming after that football. Perfect snap. Here comes the rush, and it's a line drive headed towards the race edge. Excellent punt there by Jared Kier inside the 35 and right at the 35-yard line. Only went for 27 yards, but that was the strategy. Do not kick it to Rosenbrock. You have to get it out of bounds as far down the field as you can. 65 yards to go. And the sophomore, Mitch Formolin, is the quarterback once again. First and 10 for the Beat Diggers at their own 35 yard line. Trips to the right. The lone setback is Seawald. Tor Mullen on first down is going to roll to his left, looking to throw, setting up, throwing on the run. Man is out there, and it's off the right hand of Kukas at the 47 yard line of Ray. Incomplete. Pretty good throw, but a little bit too high. Yeah, a little wobbly, but you know, it was a good play. Bootleg left, and Kukas went up for the ball right there at the very last second and got a hand on it. 